Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Rideshare Wars. You ever been interested in trying to beat somebody else out in Uber or Lyft? I mean, a lot of people here in LA definitely do. But in the game Rideshare Wars, you're playing either a solo variant of the game or it is two to four players. It's ages 14 and up, and it takes about a half an hour to an hour to play. In the game Rideshare Wars, you're basically going to be competing drivers trying to take people around the city. You're basically going to gain uh, these passengers and as you are going around selecting them it has a tableau management style feel along with the ability to get tool cards tool cards will allow you to have certain actions they also have some instant effects that take place all while at the same time you're trying to score uh, these bonus points or these bonus cards the yellow ones here last forever and if you get all the zones in a specific city you can gain this one or if you're gaining these guys here the green ones it is uh, these were passable so if you might have all the uptown zones somebody else might surpass you and be throughout the game until before it's over and they can take that card as well. You can also take loans, which you're going to need drivers, so you're going to have drivers in your hand to purchase passengers, and at the end of the game, if nobody has secured six of the bonus point cards to win the game instantly, then you're going to tally up all the points in your tableau, and the person who has the most is the winner. All right, let me go and show you what's in included in the game. Here's the game Rideshare Wars and everything that's included, other than, of course, the box and the rules. This is all prototype, so it will probably be changing as the campaign goes on. Here is everything you get. There's tons of different decks. Let's go ahead and talk about them. First of all, there's the rider deck. You're going to have the contested riders and the curbside riders. These guys are the ones you're going to be picking up throughout the game. And, of course, you're going to have the morning, afternoon, and evening riders. There's three rounds to the game, so you're going to have to set these decks up. 15, uh, 14 cards in each or 15 and uh, then you're going to lay out four of these guys here the rest of the deck is going to go here and you're going to lay out four over here these can be switched around uh, over here you're going to have tool cards and these cards you're going to pick up one a turn and they're either going to have an instant effect that you have to do or you can save them or even use them as an op for optional abilities every player is going to get seven drivers except for the last player he'll get two and the first player is going to get this little handy dandy token which will change throughout each round moving on to different players these are are the different uh, different achievement cards you can get throughout the game. You have the yellow ones, which are instantly yours once you acquire them, and the green ones, which will pass through players after somebody gets three of the requirements. And finally, of course, you're going to have loan cards. You can take these to gain new drivers, and then, of course, you're going to need to pay these guys back if you can. Uh, these are going to be used to purchase these guys, and it's going to be a one, two, three, and four cost, depending on where you're going to be buying them. And as the round continues, these guys are going to start popping out. After all three of these rounds of Included the person with the most points in their tableau is going to win because you're going to be playing drivers out in front of you. That's the basic of all the different contents in the game. All right, let's come up and talk about the different things you can do as well as what a turn is like. So there's a lot going on in this game, so I'm going to help with my handy dandy little tool guide to explain what everything does. And if I have any caveats, I'll explain them to you. The first thing you're going to do as the first player is draw a tool card. If it's a card that instantly has an effect, you're going to do that. If not, you're going to go ahead and just keep it or use it when you need to. Uh, those tool cards sometimes are going to be useful and sometimes they're going to be negative but you need to uh, preserve them. After the first two of the special instant effects happen uh, during the round, you won't be using those anymore. Then, of course, you have step two, which is an optional step. You can displace a contested rider. Contested riders are the ones that are basically going to end the rounds, and if you don't like what you see, you can choose to discard a tool card, remove that, and put a new one out in front uh, uh, in front of its place with the, with the main deck. Then, of course, there is three, which is acquire one contested rider card. You have to choose one of these riders and pay the cost. The first slot is one, second is two, three, and four. You'll use your driver cards to pay to acquire the rider. Riders. Then comes the lay a rider card down from your hand. If you have a rider already in your hand or you pick one up and you want to use that, you have to place one of them down. Uh, some of them are going to force you to play them down, like these socialites. These guys kind of make you do that, and they're not super great, but sometimes you need them, right? Finally, uh, there is the playing two optional actions, and actually the optional actions are on here, which I'll talk about down below. Earning milestone cards if needed, or which are basically going to be the achievements uh, throughout the game. If you get six of these, you win. Check your hand size, make sure you've got four riders at max, two of the uh, these little uh, tool cards, and uh, you can have infinite uh, these driver cards, so you can acquire as many as you can get. And the last thing is you're just going to set the contested riders, if you had purchased them or removed them, back up into play so that there's enough for each uh, for the next player, four and four. After that, the turn will pass, and it's the next player's turn, and can, the game is going to continue throughout those entire rounds. So that's the basic aspect of the game. Let me go ahead and show you what it looks like. So back to the board once again, we have the first player over here. He's got his little uh, cards he's going to be using to help him throughout the game, and the last player gets two additional drivers. Normally, you start with seven. 
we can go ahead and remove these things here because I'm not going to need them, but we'll keep the first player icon there just so you get an idea of uh, who starts, which will be this guy. And he has his seven drivers. So the first thing he's going to do is go ahead and look at his handy dandy turn step-by-step -step sheet, and he's going to draw a tool card. These cards are what you can use instantaneously. This one here says play this card uh, right away, then draw another one. It says each player shuffles their hand of rider cards face down, and then discards one randomly. Unfortunately, none of it, nobody has any riders, so this would just get discarded, and a new card would get drawn for him. Here we go. Got a moving, uh, got a rider moving far away. Get another in their place today. Swap a rider card, except uh, negative value cards, from your tableau, anything that's in front of you, with one uh, card of the uh, same city from the curbside. Uh, which are th this area over here. So if you have the same city, like an F, you can go ahead and switch it with a dude from F. That's just pretty useful. Otherwise, he can go ahead and choose to save this. The next thing he's going to do is he can choose to uh, optionally dis displace a contested rider, these guys here. Let's say he doesn't like this guy or he doesn't want somebody else to get this guy. He can simply discard his tool card and remove this guy and add a new one from the main deck over here. Not from these guys here because this is what determines when the rounds are over. That is an option he could choose to do if he doesn't want to do that. However, he skips that and he goes to acquiring a rider. Let's say he likes this DJ here. This is cost of one, two, three, and then four riders. He can simply get rid of one of these riders here. He'll take the DJ into his hand and then he's going to have to uh, lay a rider card uh, from his hand into his tableau. So he'll play that guy right there. Some cards have effects. Let's talk about the cards. So first you have the uh, city and then you have the zone. There's three zones. You have up, Town, downtown, and uh, midtown. I believe this one here is uh, downtown. But uh, this one up here is going to be the letters are going to be cities. So A, B, C, D, E, and F. These are all the different cities. And then, of course, what the effect is. And then finally, the point value at the end of the game. And this just tells you what type of writer it is. This says gain one tool card and add it to your hand. So he'll go ahead and take that card. Nice. Not too bad at all. And uh, if he wants to trade this guy, there's some optional actions he could do. So he could do so uh, and gain one driver card. So he's got his extra tool card. And this one says he just gains two cool tool cards. So this is basically like a pot of greed. He'll just go ahead and play that he'll gain his two pot of greeds um, and also you'll notice that there's optional actions uh, which is basically right after laying a rider you can choose to do two of these and there's quite a few of them you can gain a rider card from the taxi riders pile which is up over here you can acquire a one rider uh, yeah, so you can acquire one rider from the curbside. You can, uh, any contested rider, any curbside rider can swap. So you can choose to discard a card and swap to one of these guys and swap these guys here. Your tableau, curbside rider swaps, uh, same city. So you can switch the same city guy if you want. You can bank another rider. And then you've got two options that do not make you uh, use these guys, which is, of course, just playing one of these guys here or discarding two drivers to draw another one of these. Remember, you can only have two in your hand at any point, though. And there's some other stuff. Pay off any number of loans, etc., etc. After you've done any of the uh, optional actions that you want to do, you can then earn any milestones that you might get. First of all, this says here, all zones, city A. So if you have uh, A, A, and an A, uptown, downtown, and midtown, you would take this instantly. It requires that you have all three, though. These green ones here state that uh, once you've gotten the most uptown zones, so if you had an F, a, Z, a G and a Z or whatever, and they're all uptown, that's three of them, you can acquire this card. But if somebody gets four, it will move to another player. If anybody gets six of these at any point in the time in the game, they're instantly over and that player is going to win. In this case, though, it's the first turn of the game, so nobody's actually going to get these. Uh, after that happens, you're going to check your hand size, and then you're going to set up a next contested rider for the next player. These all move down, and a new rider is going to pop up. Ooh, accountants. Now this player is going to get to go and he's simply going to draw one of his cards here. He's going to check it, see what it does. Maybe he doesn't want to use it. Then he's going to have to spend riders to pick something up he wants. He'll go ahead and pick up dudes and then he's going to go ahead and lay down dudes. So what has he got for dudes? Uh, this one says the card value equal to the number of dude cards in your tableau multiplied by two. So if he had two dudes, it'd be worth four points. Not too bad, right? And he's got his A city and he's got an uptown zone. Then after that, he's going to move on to his... Um, playing optional actions if he wants to do anything. Maybe he'll want to uh, get another rider, or maybe he'll want to just simply play his card here. This one says acquire one rider card from the curbside and get a discount of two off of the cost. For example, if the card costs three, then discard only one driver card. So if you want to pick up a guy, and of course the cost, it'll tell you, over here it'll tell you the cost based on their uh, point value, and over here it's the cost, obviously, of uh, the, uh, the placement, right? So two, three, and four. 
or sorry, yeah, two, three, and four. And so depending on what the card says is where you're gonna be picking up the riders, most likely it's gonna be from over here. If he doesn't wanna do any of that, he would simply go ahead and check to see if he got any of these guys here, any milestones, check his hand size, and then of course set up the next rider. And this is going to continue playing until five rounds are over. After five rounds have been concluded, which is basically one, two, three, that's uh, five turns, uh, full turns around the board, uh, then this is going to end the morning phase, and you move on to the next phase. You're gonna refresh the board so that players are gonna have new uh, riders to choose from in this area and uh, all the while all these things moving around and finally the last one is going to conclude with everybody checking in front of them their tableau now if you look at it all these different cards do different things this tells you an ability so this one says you have to discard a tool card when you play it down but it has a trade value and there's a trade option on the optional actions and then of course the different locations and whatnot which will try and secure the, these things so it's basically a tableau builder with the um the differentiation of some of these cards are not very good, but they will benefit you in the long run by gaining you these specific zones, or you can try and leave them out for your opponents to force them to pick these guys up because they're going to have to pick up a rider, and then you're going to also have to play a rider, and in which case maybe they don't want the specific rider. Socialites are one of those things that can be okay, but generally speaking are going to be worth negative points. There's quite a lot of different riders in the game, as you can see. you got fans, you got Mr. Grumpy, you got a DJ, you got a party people, and all of them are going to have their own benefits and a lot of them are going to have some serious costs, so you need to be careful about that. That's the basic idea of the game, Tableau Builder, going around in circles, collecting the different drivers from the different locations, using your optional actions, and picking up your milestone cards. If you can get six, you win. If not, you're going to tally up all the points by just simply adding them together. So, for instance, at the end of the game, if this player had all of these guys here, you would look at them and say, okay, how many DJs do I have? I've got two of them here. That's going to be worth four points. This one here is worth one, so that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten points. He has ten. He would only have two points, so he would be the winner of the game. You get the idea. So let's come up and talk about it. Okay, so let's talk about Ride Share Wars. The first thing, I made a little mistake uh, with the tool cards. You have three of them in your hand, not two, but otherwise I think you pretty much get the idea of the game. It is a tableau builder, and it is one of those games where you don't necessarily directly affect players except for these specific effect cards. Uh, the first thing I noticed was uh, sometimes these nasty effects pop out and they're not very good. Other times they're very helpful. Play this right away, then draw another car tool card. Everybody discards two driver cards. So these are pretty much nasty effects, generally speaking. Everybody discards a tool card. And it's the first two that affect everybody and not the, 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 the you know, after the first two. I think the rules should be actually switched. So the first two do not affect people because it usually only affects one or two people, especially early in the game. Whereas later in the game, it'll affect everyone. Uh, but it, I guess that's nitpicking, but it, it did, it, it twerked me a little bit. Um, uh, the, all the riders are fine. The artwork is, is okay. You know, it, it's cool for what it is, and it, it does have that theme of basically Lyft and Uber and all this kind of stuff where you're like trying to pick up these different guys and some of them are going to be cranky and nasty and you're not going to want to take them but you need to because this is the nice uptown part of the area and I need to in order to acquire all cities in zone A. Or maybe I don't have the most uptown zones anymore because somebody just got four and I need this grumpy guy for five which will net me three points with a negative one or I'm, oh, I've got five of these zones already and I have negative points but it doesn't matter because I only need one more to score to win the game and there's a lot of different variation throughout the game. Uh, we played with multiple people one of them was a new board gamer and had to learn all these different things didn't even know what tableau was and so it was kind of like trying to get to the gist of everything of uh, the the rules are are lengthy and hopefully throughout this campaign i imagine it'll be twerked and cleaned up by an editor so i usually don't talk too much about that but nevertheless it could be tweaked upon make it a little easier for people to understand on uh, the optional actions there's a lot of them and most of them require uh discarding of a tool card i actually like all these different optional actions but i think for a player who's newer to board gaming or somebody's more like inclined to only understand a couple actions it might confuse them a little bit but as i continued to play the game as i started to uh you know go throughout the different motions and whatnot understanding how it flowed it wasn't too bad and there's quite a few things you can do, which it's actually a positive in my opinion. Gaining a rider card from the taxi pile, acquiring one rider from a curbside, any contested riders you can actually swap so you can pick up a new rider next time or make sure your opponent doesn't get one. Uh, you've got bank one rider card, so you can play an additional rider card from your hand down, which is going to be netting you positive throughout the game. You've got playing the tool card, obviously, for its different effects, so they actually count as currency or like some kind of useful like resource, as well as its effect on its own. You can gain tool cards from discarding drivers if you don't need to, but drivers are a commodity in this game and you need to have them. Uh, you can gain drivers by using loans and stuff like that. 
And of course, loans are loans, right? They're useful to begin with, but they kind of cost later on. Pay off any number of loan cards and draw one writer card from your tableau. So, you know, there's certain things that are pretty cool. There's a lot of options throughout the game and you're starting to be picky. And I noticed as we were playing the game, one of the players was like, I really don't want this guy. Why is this guy even in the game? And I'm like, that's because you need that specific guy because then it will net you the ability to get all zones in City F, which will give you a net of three points. And if, especially if you're going for all of the different milestones, that's how you're going to win the game. It's also there to mess with your opponents. You can try and find a way to make sure that you're not going to get that guy and force somebody else to because all of these guys throughout morning, noon, and night are mostly going to be chosen. And sometimes you're going to be having to be forcibly taking certain guys, which can negatively affect your tableau. But that's the kind of idea of the game. So it has a little bit of a mechanical function as far as the tableau goes, has a little bit of take that as far as the deck goes. It's one of those games where if you'd like tableau builders, it's a more complicated style of Machi Koro with more options and different flavor to it with a different theme. I'm right on the level of this game. I do enjoy certain parts of it. I think it needs a couple tweaks with certain cards and whatnot. But overall, it was a positive experience. If this sounds like a game that'd be interested for you go ahead and check it in the link below currently on kickstarter ride share wars hi guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer kickstarter board game review if you like this video go ahead and check out our star videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment we always got new stuff as well as checking out ride share wars we're battling it out against other drivers trying to secure as many riders as you possibly can also go to your website unfilteredgamer.com tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more and our friends at thingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek all right guys that's all i got for this one and as always i look forward to not having to drive you in an uber next time